let's uh, let's get into the insufferable hypocrisy of the elite. Uh, this this is of course a, a reference to the weirdo Super Bowl performance that I watched yesterday. And I mean, for any Americans watching, right? No one watches the Super Bowl. No one outside of America watches it. So we don't know anything about it. We don't have any particular frame of reference we, we see the shows sometimes uh, occasionally but it's not like on tv here no, it's, not it's like you see it on social media yeah exactly and and so i i watched like you know the weekend's performance like 15 minute performance in the middle of it and i'm i i just don't know what the hell i'm looking at anymore like i am so disconnected to, from pop culture i'm just looking at this thinking how is this an advert right so this this was a screenshot i took from the uh background of the initial part where the guy's performing in front of a neon city and it's so weird because it makes it look so unappealing i mean look how like uh, can we go back to the other one sorry john go look look how like it's it's weird it's smoky and it's got like all these neon buildings and on the buildings i i couldn't exactly uh see what was written on the buildings but i think it, i as uh, someone replies that i think it says alone you're enough it's like that's a weird message isn't it come to this big smoky city where you'll be alone but that'll be okay and it's like but why would i want that why is that desirable why would i want to be just lost in some city and i say lost because we get to the next one right he does this part of the performance where he's in what looks like a representation artistic representation of like city streets with the neon signs and in uh, i didn't take the screenshot of this the part, the part i'm about to refer to but in this like he's walking around like he's lost in all these like this maze of glowing signs and then a bunch of other people dress the same as him but with like i don't know weird white face masks start barging past them and stuff like this as if it's like really confusing and it's bright and you know you're alone and you're afraid it's like how is this a good advert for the the environment you guys live in right because you, you you as an artist i'm not an artist but i understand the artists write what they know and they can they can you know talk from personal experience which is why you get art from adversity you know if you've gone through something harrowing you explain it to other people through the medium of art and so it's like okay what what are we looking at with these people and it's like right so you've got like these like cookie cutter cities where they're basically all the same they're smoky and dark when they're not unbelievably bright and crowded with people and uh and then it goes on to the next one which i just found was just amazing right it starts like go it goes out onto the, the field after going through this thing and then all of the the weirdo guys dressed in masks start doing some sort of fascist march in the in the pitch and, I, and at this point i'm just like all these you know glowing red lights dudes dressed in red with their faces covered doing a fascist march and i'm like, okay i have no idea what the hell this is meant to represent but if this is like their world and the environment they live in i'll settle for you know going for my walks in the countryside thanks and then going home to my kids like i don't don't envy this at all Right. Anyway. It actually kind of reminds me of the 2012 Olympic opening ceremony oh, in, yeah. in opposite. I Go don't on. know if you remember, but like part yeah. of the opening ceremony was showing off like the fields of England, yep. and then the Industrial Revolution happens, and yep. the industrialists come in and build the yep. industrial side. But the, it makes the fields of England look amazing in response. Mm. But this is the exact opposite. I guess. Yeah, well, the, that's the thing. What, what, are, what, are, what are these people offering you? And it seems to be being alone being confused and being surrounded by a bunch of Nazis. <laughs> so it's like, okay, well, no thank you. I appreciate the offer, but no thank you. Um, but anyway, so the, uh, the the hypocrisy begins, naturally, because uh, the mayor of Tampa, Florida, Jane Castor, uh, the, the Super Bowl was held in Tampa, Florida, and I believe it was a local team that won, so good for them. Um, but uh, maskless fans at the Super Bowl will be identified by law enforcement and the police will, quote, handle the situation. It's like... Well, people not wear masks at yeah, the Super Bowl. but I don't think... I didn't realise it was a mandate in Florida. I thought Florida had fairly lax uh, rules when it came to masks and things like that. But, uh, but okay, thanks. We're gonna, you're going to be tyrannised by the state. And, of all things, she was photoed at a recent sporting event with no mask on. Is she going to get got by the police? She's going to have to arrest herself, I exactly. suppose. Exactly. Nothing's going to happen. Again, more boundless hypocrisy. And uh, the facial recognition software is pretty terrifying, the way it's becoming. Like, th th this uh, video from China, uh, where someone can get something authorised out of a vending machine using facial recognition software. Uh, meaning, as Amuse has pointed out here, that you could be deplatformed from money. Uh, if you're below the social credit score in China. 
and this is the kind of thing, like not wearing a face mask, oh, you're below the social credit score, now the police are going to come and get you, but that doesn't apply to your rulers, of course, because it's not one rule for all, it's one rule for one and one rule for you. Uh, so, good news. But there are private business who run the vending machines, they can do what they want. Exactly. Exactly, uh, but anyway, and it's it's just a merger between state and corporate power. Stop complaining. I don't know what don't know what your problem is. Uh, anyway, so carrying on from the weird like fallout from this Super Bowl thing again, looking at it purely as an outsider, uh, this I found hilarious from Vice magazine was complaining because Dolly Parton had done a, a, a song in it and she had kind of repackaged it it's nine to five uh, she'd repackaged it i guess sponsored by squarespace <laughs> and uh, the 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 implication was that you could do a bit of a side hustle with squarespace and make some extra money and this was like oh my god how dare you suggest that people could do a side hustle it's like well you're making extra money outside of your job that's a good thing. It means you can save up money and you can start a business. You can buy that thing you want. You can go on holiday. I don't know. You know, you do whatever it is you want with your extra money because you earn some extra money. But uh, the complaint, obviously, is actually if economics had uh, kept pace since 1968, the minimum wage would be $24 an hour today. $24 an hour? Who the hell can afford that? Like, like has, have the prices of food, have, have they risen in line with that sort of wage? Have they? I don't think I make $24 an hour. So it's like, the hell? But anyway, uh, the, uh, the, com the common complaint, obviously, from the leftists is people can work hard to make money and therefore they don't need the state. That's bad. Moving on. Uh, there's a guy called Tom Brady who apparently won the Super Bowl. I don't know what's so great about the bowl and I don't know what he's going to put in it. <laughs> 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 but I've heard it's super. Um, but the, the problem, of course, as you can see from the picture, he's white. It is. I mean, that is the problem, fundamentally. Because in America, it's currently Black History Month. A white man won the Super Bowl during Black History Month. And he isn't going to give the bowl to a black charity or something. I don't as know. you mentioned, the shortest month of the year. <laughs> the shortest month of the year. <laughs> No, no joy. He's also but, wearing a little bit of blackface there, I noticed. Yeah, I'm surprised that wasn't called out, actually. Uh, but uh, but there were loads of tweets that um, Paul Joseph Watson has just accumulated in this article that's worth reading some of them. During Black History Month? What a racist. Something about this feels racist. So, yeah, some, something about a white man winning a sporting event during Black History Month feels racist. That's you, mate. That's on you. That's, that's your thought process there. Because these things are not connected in any way, shape, or form. They're nothing to do with one another. But you are looking at this through the lens of a racist, and you're just like, hmm, that guy's white. I have a problem with that. Is he the guy with the MAGA cap as well? Like, I think he was pictured he was. with the MAGA cap. Yeah, he was pictured with the MAGA so cap. So that, is that part of it, maybe, you think? That, it wasn't in their complaint, but uh, if they if they knew about that, well, that would just be confirmation that he's a racist, yeah. wouldn't they? We you found know? his clan hood. Yeah, well, there we go. That's yeah, how that's, they view it. That is exactly how they view it. Um, but uh, but anyway, yeah, so this, again, I think he was just delineating between the sort of urban elite and the non-urban uh, common folk. And this is something that the uh, the hedge fund billionaires have clocked onto. So like I was saying about the, the harmonization of the narratives, I do think it's the same forces that's driving everything. And uh, so when hedge fund billionaire Ray Dalio fears that the GameStop frenzy was really about wealth inequality, about class warfare, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. And one of the things that the GameStop uh, uprising showed is that it is one rule for one and one rule for another. They deliberately changed the rules in order to protect certain hedge funds, despite the fact that that's not how the game is supposed to be played. Uh, but he says... No, I'm not sure I agree with the idea it's class warfare, because as pointed out well, before like it, it wasn't a divide based on class it was a divide based on corruption like elon musk was on the side of the you know the smaller yeah, guys the class here. isn't about money maybe but it was it was definitely if you want to phrase it like that but I, i'm not sure i'd call wall street types a class of their own in the traditional sense that we use upper and lower class in, in, if you want to group in, them and call them a class as a new definition that would work their cl a class of people can be defined in practically any way you want as long as it's a, a shared unifying characteristic it doesn't have to be about wealth for example donald trump um i mean the left would really call him a class traitor because he sided with the regular folk uh, against the elite and you can see why like look at his mannerisms look at the way he talks like he but he's still not one of the working class 
Well, you say that, but well, actually, not. he kind of is. Like, he might be on their side. But it's not, not just that he's on their side. He speaks to them in their language Yeah, as but well. this is Tucker Carlson. I mean, even you say that Tucker Carlson is not a working-class guy by his own but, admission. But, but, yeah, Tucker Carlson is not a working-class guy by his own admission. But also, um, personality-wise, he's not a working-class guy. Right? He doesn't do working-class things. Yep. Tucker Carlson wouldn't have silver platters of Big Macs, but Trump did, right? <laughs> I, I honestly don't think Trump is actually very different at all to the working class people. He just happens to be a lot wealthier. Um, but if you look at him culturally and the sort of way he views America and the world, he's exactly the same as these people, which is why they like him. You know, in fact, they love him. Um, but the, 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 the distinction, it is classes. It's not necessarily about wealth, though, as you say. It's really about being an insider and being an outsider. And it's the outsider saying, well, look, you know, we don't care if you're insiders, but the rules should be the rules as for the entire thing. And the insider is saying, well, we're the ones who control the application of the rules. And so if we want them to apply to you, they will. If you want them to apply to us, well, that's at our discretion, which is precisely what, you know, the woman not wearing the mask at the ball game or whatever it was, and then saying, well, we'll get facial recognition software onto you. Unless you're rests herself then we have further proof of this but uh, but this this is what uh, ray dahlia says he says the the big thing is whereas short squeezes are just part of the game uh, the system doesn't work for most people so it needs to be re-engineered otherwise we're going to have a civil war and uh, he also says he's he's the, he's the uh, co-chief of bridgewater associates the world's largest hedge fund with over 150 billion dollars in assets and he says i can relate to these guys i would have been there with them doing the same thing so it's not even that he he disputes their moral claims here. Um, the question is, you know, do we really want to kill each other? That's what worries me. Uh, of course he is. And he personally wasn't really worried about the GameStop uh, short uh, squeeze. Uh, he pointed out the real big money wasn't involved, as far as he knows. So this was kind of a, in, in the grand scheme of, like, you know, Wall Street, uh, this was a fairly small sideshow, really. And... You know, pr you know, relatively still, speaking, yeah, but still a sizable chunk. Yeah, but 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 more importantly, it puts the rest of them on notice, which is why he's saying, "Well, look, this this attitude, this will that's underpinning this, this is the will of a civil war, and so we need to talk about why this is going to happen. And is it the system that's the problem? It's like it's not really the system that's actually the problem. Uh, it's really the application of the rules by the people running the system. You know, the system theoretically is set up to create a fairly coherent sort of one rule for for all right that's meant to be the case and that's why the the gamestop uh, the wall street bets guys could do something against these hedge funds you know because the rules were there and you just didn't think people were going to notice and then when they did you should have just taken the l and moved on you know the rest of wall street maybe should have gone right okay we'll take the l and we'll just carry on as we should but instead they haven't and that's why this guy's like well look this is like civil war territory yeah it is you know when people feel that like open corruption is not going to be addressed then yeah you're exactly in that problem and that's that's exactly where we come to with biden right so i mean look at the way that wikipedia talks about uh the biden ukraine conspiracy theory it, it's not a conspiracy theory we know we know that joe biden admitted that he put pressure on ukraine to fire a, a prosecutor who is investigating hunter biden for with the threat of withholding like a billion dollars in aid from the US. Right? He he was at a Council of Foreign Relations meeting and just said it. Just came out and admitted it. Right, so we have got it on that. video. We have Hunter Biden on video admitting to ABC News that if the surname wasn't Biden, he wouldn't be getting 50k a month as on the board of Burisma. We have him admitting this. So this is pure nepotism at this point. And it's this kind of open corruption that is driving people mad. Like the the next one, New York Post. In the previously denied where biden hunter biden and joe biden is joe biden specifically had said oh i've never i've never met with any ukrainian businessmen or anything like that well the hunter biden emails showed that he did he absolutely did this categoric right and then when you go to the next one the hunter biden laptop story which is what this comes from uh this got censored this got suppressed this would have affected the vote we find out that biden is getting millions from chinese companies again suppressed it's like look everyone can see this you know, this isn't a secret. And then you get Joe Biden coming out and saying stuff like, oh, I'm not exactly going to go hard on Xi Jinping. We'll, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be competitive, he says, but, uh, but I'm going to take a very different approach to Trump. It's like, okay, but Trump was a very adversarial approach that was actually getting stuff done, you know, declaring a trade war on China. Joe Biden's not going to do that at all. Of course not. He's being paid by China. We know he's being paid by China. It's like, okay, so you have an incredibly clear divide with this hypocritical elite that are openly corrupt and applying rules to you that 
they don't abide by. It's untenable. It's an untenable situation and can't go on. And so there's been this clip going around of Biden getting booed at the Super Bowl, which I have to say I think is actually fake news. But uh, we'll just play a bit of the clip. Just uh... Wear masks. Stay socially distanced. Get tested. Get vaccinated when it's your turn. And most of all, let's remember all those who we've lost. So please join us, Kansas City Chiefs, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the National Football League in a moment of silence for more than 440,000 Americans who lost their lives in this pandemic and for their loved ones who are left behind. So the, the reason that sounded sus is because I don't know whether you could hear it, but there's a, a point where the booing just stops abruptly for about a second or so, uh, which makes it sound like it was edited in, right? And I mean, I would like to have been able to come out and say, see, here are the people booing Joe Biden, was thing? but that may not have been true. Um, Snopes has said that it's unproven, which is fair, to be honest. It seems to be unproven, and I, I'm in doubt. But uh, But that really, you know doesn't matter it doesn't change any of the other things and of course returning to the time article from the other day which again everyone should be talking about now i can't help but notice there's a surprising silence from tucker carlson on this who's the person that i've been waiting for input for on this because i'm very curious to hear on his take on this uh the fact that he hasn't talked about it yet as far as i'm aware and if he has send it to me uh is i find very interesting but uh, but again it's just like the mask can't slip if we just rip it off and so here we are uh, ethics is saying the, the, what the elite are saying is that ethics is not something that needs to concern us. It is something that needs to concern you. And that's not something that can continue. 